with one year of videos now under my belt. I'm curious, what, uh, if you can remember, what was the first video you saw of mine? I'd love to hear uh, what that was for you. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great day today. My name's Cody, and I want to thank you so much for stopping by the farm today. So I think it's pretty apparent we had our first major snowfall event of the season. Some areas we got up to about a foot of snow, which is fantastic. It's a lot of moisture, which is much needed this time of year right now. Um, especially if we had our fall bulbs and stuff like that in, which we don't yet. So that's perfectly fine. It's just a lot of good moisture for the soil. Originally my plan today was to get a lot of that uh, fall bulbs in, the garlic and the tulips, but um, with our new blanket here that makes it a little bit challenging. So typically when we get our first snow of the year, oh, it's coming down to the trees there, it doesn't last that long so it's still going to warm up. I expect all this to go away this week sometime. So not much I can do outside, just show you guys around a little bit and have a look at what we're dealing with here. We had a load of straw dropped off last week there and we used that for mulching the, the flower beds and the garden beds to help retain moisture and fight weeds and those sorts of things. Now right behind me here is our garden. So the last few videos we've been out here digging carrots and all those sorts of things but uh, they've all disappeared under this nice winter blanket. That's not a problem. Carrots especially do quite well with a bit of snow cover. It kind of acts as an insulator from the actual cold uh, and when they get touched by frost and the weather gets a bit cooler it also helps to sweeten them up a little bit. So let's go see if we can find any. There we go, fresh as can be. And so even though we have a little bit of a blanket of snow, nothing wrong with that. Like I say, the carrots are still great, so I can dig these up when this snow goes away. It's still really quite warm out, you know, we're at around zero. Uh, so that's the freezing mark here, and that's fine. You know, this snow, you get a day with sunshine on it, plus five, plus ten is in the forecast the rest of this week. All this will go away, all that moisture will be added into the soil, which is fantastic. Still plenty of time to dig our carrots but I do not want to work out here, so I am going to go inside and get some other projects done. So let's go over there and uh, see what we can work on today. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. You should always leave a little bit of dirt on your carrots just to help with your immune system, you know? So never completely wash them. So an excellent project on a day like today is to separate our seed garlic. So they come like this. You see, we've got the bulb there. Now in a hard neck variety, you get cloves that grow all the way around a central hard stalk. Uh, this stalk is actually the seed head for it. And in the springtime, you typically break those off and uh, you can use them like you would asparagus, quite spicy asparagus. But anywho, that's, uh, how, that's how you know you've got hard neck. The problem with hard neck is you have to get all these clothes off and you can peel them individually so it goes pretty quick, not too bad there and they come off quite... But when you have a few hundred bulbs to do, if you want to go a little bit quicker, what I like to do is I'll grab a bulb like so and hold it in my hand like that. So the roots are facing upwards and you have your hard stem facing down and then you want to find a good hard surface. Now be careful not to slam your hand into the table because that could hurt. But if you do just a quick little, uh, let's see here. Stem's not working. Let's try one with a good stem on her. Okay, let's try this guy here. So just a quick crack like that. What you end up happening is the stalk pushes straight up and out the back side, and that comes out in one piece, and then you're left with all those bulbs around what was the stalk and then they just simply fall apart in your hand like that. Super, super straightforward. There we go. So, like I say, when you've got a few hundred bulbs to do, it's nice to be able to speed the process up. So I'm just gonna go ahead, there we go, get the rest of these stalks off here, and uh, yeah, we'll keep moving forward. Okay, there we go. There's about another thousand, I would say, cloves in here all ready to go. So that brings us up to just under 3,000, I imagine once we're all said and done here. It's gonna be a fantastic harvest next year for sure. And I just wanted to show you guys these ones. These are just two garlic cloves here. I don't know if it'll focus or not, but let's try. There we go. Yeah, this is just two garlic cloves. Look how big that one is. 
pretty much the same size as some of the tulip bulbs that we're planting here. Pretty crazy. Welcome to our garlic patch for 2022. Super excited. I always love this time of year. The weather's starting to get a little bit cooler, which is nice for working outside. I do appreciate that. Right now we're sitting at around just above freezing, so that's that's not too bad. And yeah, it's the perfect time to get our garlic into the ground. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna show you real quick how I do it here. I've got about 3,000 uh, cloves to get in. So that should take me the rest of the day here if I keep at it. And uh, yeah, it's super straightforward. So uh, this is just gonna give you a little idea as to if you're trying to grow garlic at home, the best way for you to do that. I'm gonna show you real quick and uh, go from there. But yeah, let's get, to, let's get back to work. First thing I like to do is make sure that the soil is nice and prepped. So uh, before we had that big heavy snowfall, I went through here with the tiller and I got everything all tilled up and you can see that it's kind of nice and light and fluffy. Um, and so that's a really good thing. I also make sure that I mix in a lot of good organic compost as well as bone meal. I find those two to be really good. Garlic I find to be a very heavy feeder. So if you're looking to grow nice big bulbs, you wanna make sure that your soil fertility is top notch. The next thing to consider is spacing. So both in depth and in width apart from each other. So for garlic, I like to go about two to three inches deep in the soil and about six inches or one fist width apart as far as spacing is concerned. You wanna make sure that the garlic has enough room to get nice and big without having to worry about competition from other uh, garlic plants or, or weeds and stuff like that. So uh, like I say, six inches apart or your fist width, whatever, and about two inches, two to three inches deep. I like to use a wooden stick. Uh, this is an old uh, rake that I broke off, uh, not on purpose, mind you. I'm, I'm pretty hard on my tools here. Anyone who's worked with me can attest to that. And this broke off actually just the other day. So anywho, I've got this nice little poker stick. Um, you might call it a dibbler, whatever you wanna use, that's fine. And it's just great because it allows me to poke holes into the soil at the appropriate depth, as well as just speeding up the whole process. So I can also, before I start planting, make sure that everything's lined up nice and neat as I'm going through with the dibbler to get the garlic into its uh, spaces. Once I have all the holes dibbled in, I'd like to go over just with a light dressing of bone meal. I've already got a lot of good amendments mixed into the soil here. So uh, like I said, a good organic compost, a lot of bone meal's already worked into here, but I like just to give it an extra feeding, uh, if nothing else, just for my own satisfaction of being able to spread some more good stuff out in the garden here. Once I have all the bone meal spread out, now the holes are dibbled and we're ready to go, the final thing we want to do is plant our garlic. So garlic is super straightforward. If you've ever been on the fence about putting some in, I highly recommend it. It's a crop that it just gives so much and asks so little. So you want to make sure that you're planting it flat side down, pointy side up. And it's super straightforward on garlic to know which is which. And like I say, yeah, put it in the little hole that you've dibbled, uh, pointy side up. The next thing is just to lightly cover it over, you know, the soil around it, just give it a little dusting and uh, the soil should cave in in that hole. And uh, that's pretty much it for planting. As you can see, the soil here is very wet already. We just had a big snow melt. So the soil is nice and hydrated. If you were in dry, dusty soil, you might want to add a bit of water uh, just to get the plants soaked in. And even in this, honestly, it's a good idea to add some moisture to the soil just to help bring in all those soil particles nice and tight around the bulb just to give it a nice good cozy hug before you go into the next step finally once everything else is done and the garlic is in there you've watered if you wanted to do that the last thing and i think one of the most important things is you want to make sure that you mulch your garlic in our area we're zone three and we get a weather phenomenon known as a chinook and what that means is that we can be in the middle of January and the week could be, you know, you're minus 30, minus 40, but then you get a Chinook uh, come in and the weather can shoot right up to plus five, plus 10. So you get crazy weather strings, or swings rather. What mulch does, it allows the soil temperature to maintain a consistent uh, temperature as opposed to getting those wild fluctuations. It also really helps to cut down on evaporation. The wind that we get here is just crazy. If you don't have mulch, you risk your soil drying out and then your garlic bulb is desiccating in those uh, dry conditions. So adding mulch, it maintains a nice consistent soil temperature as well as locks in a lot of that moisture, which is super, super important to make sure that our garlic survives a nice, healthy winter. Once you have the mulch done and everything is in place, that's pretty much it. Make sure if you're in a drier area or it's been a string of uh, dry weather, you can water your garlic in now, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Watering is always a good thing. 
For all intents and purposes though, your garlic should be ready to go. You're not gonna have to do anything now with it until the springtime. And even then, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I'd probably give this another good feeding of bone meal in the spring, just to kind of get another little kick start there of food. That's always a good option to do it. But other than that, this stuff is pretty straightforward, super, super easy. Now you might have planted your garlic too soon and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. So you might notice in your garlic patch that you're getting uh, green garlic uh, shoots coming up out of the ground. That's not a problem. Your garlic is smart. It knows what it's doing. It's already set good roots. You might have planted it too early though and that's a good indication that maybe next year you need to wait I know some of us, we get so anxious about getting stuff in the ground, but there is definitely such a thing as too early. Um, one thing that you can do to combat the, the green garlic coming up is just add more mulch to it to kind of protect that green growth. If you don't, that's fine. The winter is not going to kill your garlic. It might kill um, what's above ground, but it won't affect the bulb itself. Um, all that means is the garlic is really happy where you've got it and it's happily growing and it should do really well for you the following year. So don't stress too much about that. You haven't made uh, you know, a fatal error or anything like that. Your garlic will still grow just as good as it should. But So don't be too worried if you see that green growth. Like I say, just mulch it if you want. Um, if not, leave it, that's fine too, it's up to you. Well, okay there, that was the basics of how I get my garlic in. So like I say, about two to three inches deep in the soil, and then another two inches of mulch on top. The straw works fantastic, it's cheap, it's easy, it breaks down into the soil helps retain moisture, it helps reduce evaporation, and it also helps to compete or outcompete rather any weed seeds that might be in the soil, which if you're like me, you have in abundance. So that's another nice benefit of mulch as well. So I've got uh, probably, I don't know, 50-ish bulbs in just like that. It took no time at all. I've got about uh, 2,950 more to go here. So I'm just gonna pick away at this and uh, see how far I can get in the day. I have to get it done though because the weather is turning and I do not wanna be out here when it's snowing. I will if I have to, but I'd really rather not. So uh, better to get back to work here right away. There we go, I got about my first thousand in the ground, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of a break, but I thought it'd be a good idea just to kind of show you guys the difference in garlic. So now not all garlic is created equal, as I'm sure you're aware that most things are like that. I've got two different types here. One, I picked up at the regular big box garden center, and the other one here is the stuff that we grew and are planting again this year. So, so this stuff is what they're selling at the big box stores and then over here is what we're putting back in you see so this is four cloves here this is ten this at the big box store I think it was ten dollars for two bulbs and we were selling this for I think it was two bucks uh, per bulb so um, big difference you know so five dollars for a bulb or two dollars for a bulb now a big part of I guess the problem is typically when you're buying garlic People buy it per bulb, if that makes sense. So it makes sense to have smaller bulbs with more cloves because then you get that quantity aspect of it, right? You're getting more, technically, for your money. Whereas uh, a lot of commercial growers don't like to grow big garlic bulbs because they're more expensive to ship and you have fewer bulbs, which um, you can't make more plants with. Uh, I like to think of it a different way. You know, I would much rather have the quality over the quantity. These guys are gonna give you better plants, they're gonna give you a better crop in the end. Um, so it's, to me it just makes sense, you know, if you're able to buy local garlic from a local farmer, not only do you help guys like us out, guys and gals out, um, you also know that your garlic comes from a good place in that it's already acclimatized to your growing zone. A lot of this stuff, you know, it comes from California, and no offense if you come from California, but a lot of it, that's where it comes from. It's a very different climate to what we have up north here. So this stuff doesn't do all that well. And people get discouraged, and I hear time and time again just how they struggle growing garlic here, and it just doesn't work out for them, and do they have any, uh, do I have any suggestions? And the biggest suggestion is buy local. I know that's kind of a, a redundant thing to say these days, because like everyone's doing that, but especially for our garlic and our seeds in general, not that this is a seed, this is a bulb, but and it doesn't matter. Um, Buying local garlic seed is super important just because it's going to be acclimatized to our area. You know it's going to grow a lot better for you and uh, you can know the farmer that grew it so you can ask them questions. This stuff, I'm not, I have no idea and I, I just can't believe it. Let me try to hold a, just a comparison. I'll grab one and one. But uh, let's see, I don't know if that'll focus or not. But look at the difference, eh? Isn't that just crazy? Now both of these will give you a plant, right? You'll get a garlic plant out of each, but look at the difference as the 
the store of energy for next year's plant? Which one do you think is going to do better for you in your garden? Right? Chances are the bigger guy. Now you might not get 10 cloves per head, but that's okay. I would much rather have four really strong, healthy plants as opposed to 10 spindly, not so good plants. But that's just my two cents on it. So yeah, I just wanted to take a little bit of a break. Um, give my spiel on shop local, support your local farmers if you can. I think that's super important. And when it comes to garlic, bigger is absolutely better. So uh, yeah, let's get back to planting garlic here. I'm able to get the bulbs in, they're two inches, just by pushing them in. So the soil is fantastic for us this year, which is fantastic. It just saves us so much time. Gosh, look at the size of that one. It's like the size of a small chicken egg. Now, having good soil, I just can't stress it enough how important it is for so much in your garden. You can see the color of this. It is wet, so it's gonna look a little bit darker than normal, but it's good, fertile, black soil. So constantly adding compost. You can see the white uh, or the gray specks. That's the bone meal we put on top of here. Making sure you've got good, healthy soil, super, super important, you know? It's a never, it's a good investment. If you're looking to work on your soil, the, the best thing I can suggest is uh, compost but uh, making sure that it's a really good, properly matured compost makes a big difference. So you can add it to your soil again and you're good to go, but I can't stress enough just the importance of having good soil. This has made this process so much easier for me. I can push them into that two inch depth and they get covered right back over, which is fantastic. So when it comes time to laying the mulch, all I have to do is spread the straw on top and we're good to go. I don't know if you guys ever just get in the zone when you're gardening, you know, it's probably been four or five hours out here pushing garlic in, but it seems like no time at all has passed. I'm just really liking this, it's quite nice. The temperature's still at around the freezing mark. The wind has not been my buddy today, but uh, at least he's been keeping me company. Otherwise, be out here all day by myself, I'd probably go crazy. close uh, look at what I'm doing. Putting the bulb in, give it a nice firm push, cover it up down two to three inches, they're, they're golden. So when I come back with the mulch, it's just sprinkle and go. We are down to the last few uh, cloves here, which I'm uh, quite thankful for. I love uh, putting garlic in, it is a lot of fun and it's very rewarding, but that wind, man, she is chilly. Last bulb, there we go, garlic is done. Well, almost, we gotta get to the top mulch on there, we'll get the straw going. I'm just gonna smooth over these holes. There we go, it's like now we did nothing at all. No one would know. Just in case I forgot to mention it earlier, for the mulch, you're looking for you know two to three inches on top. So that's uh, just a good rule of thumb. That's what I'm doing here. So uh, I guess stay tuned till next summer to see if that's uh, the right answer or not. But uh, yeah, two to three inches on your mulch is kind of the sweet spot. Whew. Well, there we go, everyone. That's it. Our garlic for the year is in. It has been fertilized, it has been mulched, and uh, with the soil being as moist as it is, and we're expecting rain in the forecast here pretty quick. Well, <laughs> rain, probably more like snow, but that's okay, moisture. They're gonna get nice and tucked in there for the winter. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a little bit focused, which I think is a great thing. We can learn a lot about one thing uh, in a short period of time. But that's where I'm gonna leave it. If you do have any questions on what we did today with the garlic or anything like that, absolutely feel free to leave a comment. I get back to all of those, so uh, it's a nice way to interact too. You know, I enjoy that as well. So anyway, guys, have a great day with whatever it is that you're getting up to. I hope you had a great time watching here and uh, thanks for hanging out with me. But until next time, guys, take care and we'll see you later. Bye now. 
I guess I'm not quite done yet. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, probably at the beginning of this video, if my editing is done properly, future Cody or past Cody, hopefully did a good job there. But I just wanted to show you guys. So you saw that huge blanket of snow that we had. It has flattened all of the stems, but they are still alive. And if we do a little test bowl here, look at that, eh? Beautiful. So they are still fantastic. They are actually a heck of a lot sweeter now that they've had a good, good cold on them. And there's just so much more left. So if I do get a chance to get these guys out of the ground, I will do my absolute best to do that. Um, they might end up just going to the food bank, you know, because we've kind of done what we needed done with them for this year. But that's okay. It's always good to share, share the love, spread the wealth, right? So anyway, guys, I'm really going to leave it here. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.